you make more by trading less. And if you have a good success rate by trading less, then you can just add more risk per trade. Um, I'd rather be right, you know, 70% of the time with, with a much higher risk amount than be right 50% of the time with a lower risk amount and trying to turn that money over more often. It doesn't work as well. So make more money by trading less. And sometimes you just sit on your hands and do nothing. And there's nothing wrong with that when conditions warrant. There are two things you need to do to make your trading strategy successful. You need to trade your strategy and then you need to trade yourself. Meaning you need to, um, when you're taking a journal of how your strategy is doing, you also need to take a journal of how you are doing with that strategy. Because um, that's the thing that people always forget. It's, there are two variables in the game. There is, you know, your analysis of the market and then your execution of your analysis. And your execution of your analysis is always 100% going to be emotionally based. 100%, I mean, the, uh, the one of the first things is that emotion is a, is, is a feature, not a bug of human condition, which is very true. And once you embrace that, once you understand that there is no such thing as discipline or controlling your emotion or any of those nonsense terms that anybody tells you, because that's literally physically and psych psychologically not possible in the human beings, um, which what is possible is to study yourself sort of on a, a kind of outside basis and understand, well, you know, I've seen this, you know, every day, this happens and I do this, you know, every day, this particular setup happens and I, and I get suckered into taking it because I think that that's the right setup, but it's really not part of my stuff. So once you actually start to note, take uh, and um, classify your own behavior, your own patterns, the patterns of your personality, the many ways I actually think are more, more powerful than the patterns in the markets, the patterns in the markets are actually you know, relatively easy to interpret, but to understand your own patterns and then modify them, you know, because you're, you, you trade yourself the way you would trade a chart. You say, oh, you know, well, that, you know, that's a dumb setup because you know, of course it's not going to work. But this setup, if you do it, that's going to work. Um, speaking about, you know, FOMO, for example, FOMO has been a, was a huge, huge failure of mine. Um, and, and that in many ways, what that, what that entailed is that I would, my, my algo has, all sorts of like drop down menus for each particular strategy, but also the drop down menu for market, right? And anytime I used market as an entry strategy into the marketplace, that was generally a sign of, uh, of my poor behavior pattern because I was chasing something. I was not letting the algo take the trade. So um, that's what helped. I mean, I, I forgot, I already forgot. I started ranting over what my, what my question was, but I think the, the, the most important thing is, is I learned how to trade myself in conjunction with trading my own strategy, that's really improved um, improved my overall performance. It went from me making you know thirty unnecessary trades a day to making just seven to ten qualified ones. So, so for me, almost instantly when when I, when I transferred from being a manual trader to an algorithmic trader, that was the key moment that things began to change because. I knew the rules that I'd I'd come up with through my analysis of past data and so on. I knew they were good trading rules, but the problem I had was the the lack of patience. So I knew in some instances, for example, I should wait longer before I I opened a position, but because of my lack of patience, I just I couldn't, and I was trying to get into the into the position too early. And likewise, you know, when you're in a position and you may be going to profit, I cut those profits too short because I was I was fearful, if you like, that I would then, you know, the market would turn and I'd lose lose that, even though I knew it wasn't the right time. And so by building the rules into an algorithm and literally just letting the algorithm do the work, instantly I saw a shift in my performance. And I went from from loss making to you know break even pretty quickly, and then over time refine that to become become profitable. So that was the key moment for me. I'm not saying that's right for everyone, but it's right for me because because of my psychology. And the algos take away the the issues that I had as a manual trader. So the great enemy is fear, and most people have a fear of losing, they have a fear of missing out. Those are the, obviously the two common fears. 
f- fear of failure, uh, fear that their spouse is going to get mad at them if they <laughs> suffer too many losses. I mean, there's all these fears. And I think the best remedy for fear is logic. Um, you know, if, if someone says, well, I'm afraid of heights, I'm, I'm a little bit afraid of heights myself. And so if I just approach it with logic and say, you know what, I'm in a building, there's a window, piece of glass between me and the ground, it's not going to break and I'm not going to fall out of the window. You know, it's the same in trading. If you can meet your fears with logic and say, I know that when I do these five things, based on my testing, based on my experience, it works. And if I don't do those things, I'm not successful. And I think you always have to go back to a plan. Now, to um, sort of make things a little more complex is in the evenings, everyone's a good trader. When the market's closed, we look at the, the trading action of the day and you said, oh, I should have bought that. I should have sold there. It's always easy at night. And one of the reasons for that is during the day when we have the emotional stress of real money, of fast moving markets, of having to make decisions quickly, our thinking brain, our prefrontal cortex, it turns off. And what turns on is our amygdala, our fight or flight brain. And many traders will know that they'll make trades, they'll lose money on those trades, And then after the market closes, they'll analyze those trades and they'll ask themselves, what in the heck were we doing? Like, why did I do that trade? Well, it's because you weren't actually thinking. You were acting on fear, acting on greed. You're you're trying to save yourself in the way that you might run away from a bear. And instead of following your rules, following your methodology, you're doing things based on the fear of missing out, the fear of losing money. So. I, you know, one thing I spend a lot of time with my students these days, I didn't do this in the past, is teaching them just to breathe, teaching them to keep a clear mind and almost have like a meditative state when you're trading. You know, I tell them you should breathe in and out with the same pace and have long exhalations. You should feel your diaphragm moving out. I mean, all of this stuff sounds like it's coming from a yoga class, but it's essential to keeping your mind in the right frame of mind. Because if you're not, you will, you know, fall into that trap of thinking with your lizard brain, that uh, that prehistoric brain, which doesn't think very well. There are three things I did that radically, radically changed my trading for the better. Number one, I focused on one single instrument. All I trade is the U.S. 30 these days. You know, I'll trade, I'll trade a little bit of Nasdaq too, but I mean, even within that subset, I'm only trading one single product right but generally i want to trade one single instrument so that was number one thing that has improved my trading because then you get to know the reason why you want to trade one single instrument is as individual traders we have a huge amount of advantages but we also have a huge amount of disadvantages um the one disadvantage we greatly have is that we don't have any information edge we don't really know who's buying who's selling we don't we certainly can't front run the news reacting to the news is almost always a um, a sucker bet um but we do have as our advantage is our ability to trade small in other words whatever we do isn't going to impact market price so we can get in and out of things very quickly and the value of focusing on one single instrument on an intraday basis this is a critical thing i'm talking about an intraday basis trading because that's what i do is the patterns on an intraday repeat themselves over and over and over every day. There literally is only two trades to make. I'll, I'll get into that in just a second, but there's just two trades to make intraday. As long as, well, as soon as you figure out that, the, you know, those pattern repetitions, it becomes so much easier to read the market. You don't need volume trader. You don't need fancy indicators, you need anything. There's just really only two things you need to understand. Um, and, it, and the only way to do that is by watching the market very carefully. So that's been the one thing, just focus on one instrument. And then the second thing that's just totally improved my trading is uh, <laughs> I stopped all averaging in, I stopped all martingaling, and I went to a one-to-one risk-reward ratio. I basically went to, you know, one, one-to-one R, and all I'm trying to do is be 51% better every day. I generally try to, I generally, you know, succeed at being 60%. But if you're anywhere on the positive edge, 
of that spread. Um, it's really, really, really helpful. And then the third thing is uh, obviously, I'm a huge believer, we talked about this in, in, in using algorithmic tools uh, for a whole bunch of reasons. But the single most important reason why um, I use my, my algo to trade is because uh, it helps me execute and manage the stops and targets um, automatically. Um, you know, what I find is that as long as you have trust and faith in your setup, let's say, you know, you, 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 you trade it, it doesn't work because of course it's never gonna work always. Uh, and you trade it again and you trade it again properly. And, and the properly will never occur if you do it manually. If you do it manually, you're always going to the worst, you know, the, the, more, the worse you do as a trader, two, three losses in a row, you're always going to want to fidget and screw up the, uh, the process. The algo will only take the trade as you wrote it, on the rules that you wrote it. That's a huge, huge bit advantage. So I just basically, those three things, I, you know, once one product, zero leverage, zero martingale, uh, even, even money trades, and let the algo do the work. Um, it's been a huge, huge um, improvement in my results. What I think in the beginning is important that you eliminate noise. You focus on one strategy that seems kind of interesting and that you give it really a serious try for three to six months. Uh, but you understand that this is not how you have to trade forever, but you really try it out. Um, what I recommend to our traders, for example, they start with a swing trading approach, then they do it for three to six months, then they switch to a day trading approach, they try that, and then they see, okay, what do I like more, what fits my personality style, and then they can go from there. What I also did is, the traders that have been with us now for a year, um, they have a pretty good understanding of the strategy, they know what to do, but what I see really where the traders accelerate is once they start um, adjusting the strategies. So what I what we did is a lot of backtesting. I, I provide ideas how you can adjust a strategy, what are other tools that you can use, how do you even create a new strategy from scratch. And I think there's a lot of value in that as well. I see a lot of traders, once they take responsibility for an ownership about their, their strategies and they get to know, okay, what, what does it even take to develop a strategy? What are the parts of a strategy? What do I need to cover? How do the timeframes work together? How do concepts, tools, indicators work together? And they try to mold it together and adjust it. That's really where you learn a lot. So in the beginning, I think it's, you need to eliminate the noise and really focus on one thing. But after that, or every few months, you, you try something new. And I think that uh, you learn a lot, always being curious and always following your leads. But in, it's a, uh, yeah, in the beginning, because there's so much noise in trading on the internet, it can get a little bit um, problematic. So try to focus on one thing and then change over time.